Ethology is the study of animal behavior, including human behavior. Now many scientists study animal behavior. What distinguishes the ethologist is the attempt to understand how behavior is adaptive in the wild. The ethologists point out that many natural behaviors do not even occur in captivity, such as in cages or zoos. For example, there may not be enough space for animals to develop their territory, or they may not court. Three great ethologists are Conrad Lorenz, Nico Tinbergen, and Jane Goodall. Lorenz from Austria and Tinbergen from the Netherlands began their pioneering research in the 1930s. Goodall from England began her studies of the wild chimpanzees in the 1960s. I've emphasized that ethologists like to study animal behavior in the wild, but even when they cannot do so, when they study animals in other settings, they like to ask themselves, how has this behavior been adaptive in the wild, in natural settings? For example, we have a farm sanctuary where we've rescued many animals, including sheep and goats, and sometimes their behavior is puzzling to us, and an ethological perspective can help us speculate about what might be going on. When we first got sheep and goats, they were silent for four weeks, and we didn't understand why they made no noise. To an ethologist, we could think about how this behavior has occurred in the natural setting in the wild. There, if an animal makes any noise, it could attract predators. So when an animal senses danger, like our sheep and goat might, might have sensed, uh, because they just came out of a slaughterhouse, uh, they, they fall back on this natural behavior and remain silent. So this is an example of how an ethologist looks at even behavior in domestic situations, transposing in the mind the behavior to a natural setting. One important concept in ethology is instinct. Many people talk about instincts as any kind of unlearned behavior. Uh, but to an ethologist, an instinct has a very specific meaning. It's not just any behavior like the hunger drive would not be an instinct, for, because for the ethologist, an instinct has a specific external releaser, a stimulus outside the, the animal that releases or triggers a reaction. For example, the distress call of a chick is a releaser that causes a hen to come to the rescue. There's a lot of noise in the scene, but you might be able to hear the chick's chirping distress call. Another example of a releaser is the flight of chickens. We've seen this on our farm a couple times. The chicken suddenly just ran for cover. And then we looked up in the sky, we saw a hawk. The ethologists have studied this and they think it's a specific pattern that the chicken see that releases the flight behavior of the chickens. A key aspect of the pattern is the length of the neck. Ethologists have found that chickens will flee a model with a short neck, which describes a hawk. They will not flee a model with a long neck, which describes a duck. Another example is the gaping of baby birds. When they hold their mouths open, that's the releaser for the feeding behavior by the parent. If they uh, don't hold it open, the parent doesn't feed them. And the ethologists have studied this, and they've determined that it has to be a specific size and pattern and relationship to the body. Another important concept in ethology is imprinting. Imprinting was actually the first concept I was assigned to read about when I began college. I read and read and just couldn't understand it. I was actually just nervous, I think, too nervous to concentrate, but I didn't know that at the time, so I just thought it was a very difficult concept. One evening I was in the library and I saw an upperclassman who was in the course. I went over to him and I asked him about this concept. I said, this, in, this concept of imprinting, it's difficult, right? And he said, difficult? It's simple as pie. And I said, well, could you tell me about it? Okay, here it is. I'll tell it so anybody can understand it. You have an egg, right? Yeah. Okay, you hear some cracking going on. And out comes a chick. And the first thing the chick sees, she says, Mama! And that's who she takes to be the mother and follows around for the rest of her life. Well, that he got it a little bit wrong. It actually helped me, but he, he missed a, a, one key point. It's not the first object that the chick sees. It's what the chick sees and follows 
during an early critical period. The critical period varies with the species. In mallard ducklings, the critical period is 13 to 16 hours after birth. Whoever the duckling sees and follows during that period that will become the parent, and then the duckling will follow that parent around for the rest of uh, the duckling's youth until the duckling reaches maturity. Before 13 hours, imprinting is very unlikely to occur, and after 16 hours, it's very unlikely to occur. These are wild mallard ducks on the pond at our farm. The ducklings have imprinted on their mother. Here the ducklings are with their mother at nightfall. It's almost as if the mother is teaching them. Rue the lamb on our farm is imprinted on his mother and follows her. Mac lost his mother at birth. One of the people who bottle fed him at our farm was Edwin, and Mac seems to have imprinted on Edwin. There are other kinds of imprinting. For example, there is sexual imprinting. During an early critical period, the young learn which species to court when they get older. In general, the best definition of imprinting is that it fills in part of a releaser for an instinct. In the case of following, the releaser is the departing parent. The baby is born with an instinct to follow the parent, but some piece of information is missing, like what the parent looks like. It's if the young came into the world and said, I know I'm supposed to follow a parent, but nobody told me what she looks like. During the early critical period, it's what the animal sees and follows. That's how they learn who to follow for the rest of their childhood. Imprinting doesn't occur in all species or in all cases. For example, the escape behavior of chickens in response to the hawk's pattern is innate or inborn. No imprinting is necessary. But when the young do imprint on a parent, they lock in on a particular individual parent. And the two can form a relationship which provides the youngster with care and protection. <laughs>